has two masts, uh, the, mains, the main mast in the uh, center toward the front of the boat, and then you got the uh, stern toward the back of the boat, so the, uh, the um, mizzen mast, it's called on a catch. So you got these two uh, mainsails, and you got then, of course, the foresails, and um, it's too much. And what you have to do is you have to um, you have to reel in the, uh, the the sail a little bit, and so there's a there's a mechanism for doing that on the boom. You got to release the halyards which hold the sail up, and you then you start you know winding it up with the winch to to pull the sail in a little bit. And so at 14, you know that's the kind of stuff I was doing. Um, and, uh, you know, dodging death, I had to find a way to dodge death on my own, I believe. But that storm got a lot worse. And, uh, and we were, we were um, recording over 70 mile an hour winds uh, on, on the boat at that time in this storm. And uh, we uh, got blown north to, um, it was a southerly storm, which was a little unusual, but we got blown up to uh, San Francisco. And I was pretty much done. I was pretty mad at my dad at that point, and I got off the boat for a while. And, um, you know, I felt like I had dodged death again for the umpteenth time. And there was other incidents, too. And uh, right under the Golden Gate Bridge on one instance, um, my dad had a party, and they were headed. we were headed from Sausalito, where the boat was outfitted, down to Santa Cruz. And these were friends of his from Santa Cruz, and... Uh, under the Golden Gate Bridge, you got this area known as the Potato Patch. And, uh, you know, the, the folklore is that uh, some Irish ship carrying potatoes had sunk there and lost their load of potatoes. And um, and so they stay there and they've made like an artificial reef because they're caught in this per perpetual vortex in one area. And so by acting like an artificial reef, it makes the water artificially shallow and then the waves will break in that area but they can float around and drift a little is the way the story goes so all I know is we got under the Golden Gate Bridge and there was swells that were just about breaking underneath the Golden Gate Bridge which is highly unusual to see swells that enormous breaking and so the the party the, that my dad had on the boat, they were unanimous. They said, oh, my God, let's, you know, turn around. And so right at that time, my dad, you know, probably they, everybody's been drinking. But uh, he decided, okay, we're going to turn around. And so right there at the wrong time, I mean, it's dark, so it's not easy to see these swells coming up. But I'm not saying my dad did it on purpose, but he was, he was in control of the helm. And he turned the boat and... Uh, right just broadside right on the side of the boat just at that point we're turning this wave hits us on the side and the entire boat i was nearly 100 percent certain the whole boat even though it's a trimer and very stable they can still capsize i mean it's not inconceivable but this wave lifted us up and just i was certain it was going over i mean everything in the galley which is the kitchen on a boat. I mean, even though it's designed to take rough seas, all the plates, everything came out of the out of the shelves in the galley. So that's another time. But since that time, it's happened on many other occasions. I ride my motorcycle. I've gone down on the highway, and your life pretty much flashes before your eyes. There's been times I thought that uh, I was going to get killed by a psycho killer. I mentioned that before. But, uh, you know, God's got me through all of them, and he can get you through all of them. And if he doesn't, he doesn't. I mean, we all know it's just science that we could go at any time. I mean, very decent, righteous people die very young sometimes. I mean, my son died at two weeks old. Could he have ever done anything unrighteous? I mean, talk about innocent. So... It happens. I mean, people can die very young, and uh, it's just, I'm not saying it's God's will, but it's just that curse that we're all having to live under from this fallen state, this organic suffering that we all have to undergo. And uh, 
Yeah, I had thought I was going to die surfing before. Um, I'm sure anybody my age, older, or even a lot of younger people have had many, many near-death experiences, but I thought I was going to die surfing once. I had to pray hard because when you are when you get panicky, you, you're not able to hold your breath as long, okay? Your heart's pumping. I mean, everything's happening in... Uh, in overdrive and so you're not going to be able to hold your breath and when you need to when you've got a 25 30 foot wave breaking down on your head okay uh it's panicky especially for somebody that uh was known to smoke a few cigarettes let's say so even at 19 i thought i was dead again so it's happened repeatedly in my life and the older i get now the more i respect life and um you know, I'm just glad. I'm glad to be alive. I really am. It's just nice to exist. And, uh, you know, it's just nice to have love, to receive love, to give love, and to be a part of this cosmic tapestry we call human existence. And, uh, you know, just hope for things to get better because they will. I mean, we don't have to just hope. People can believe the promises. See, that's the good news about believing the promises in Scripture. God can't lie. If there's one thing that is utterly antithetical to his character, his nature, his personality, hers, too, because the two are one. God is male and female, like our divine parents, the sovereign authority, like little children, innocent in their will toward us, what they want for us, the purity of their heart, God's will is, is beautiful and pure. But it's logical. Their will for us is very, very clear. But God, thankfully, understands what we're up against as humans, and his grace endures, and it extends into the heavens, and he's always pouring it out for all of us. But he knows what it's like to be human, and this is the whole story about Jesus coming here and dying on the cross, and he, he paid what's compared to a ransom by paying God paid, and Jesus knows exactly the heart and mind of God. So if we know the heart and mind of Jesus, and we can God can't hide anything or else we couldn't learn from it. It's all revealed to us in Scripture. And so his character, his nature, and his personality is laid out for us. And his will for us is laid out for us. And he can't lie. There's one thing God can't do, it's lie. And it's promised that the meek, the righteous, the humble in heart, those that are pure in heart, I mean, if your will for your fellow man is pure, and that extends to your enemies, it has to be pure, that you latch on to the attitude, the spirit of how you should feel toward your enemies, the most vile of people you can imagine. And I know that's tough. Believe me, you think I, I'm, I'm just as human as everybody else. I know it's, it sounds absurd almost. I get it. It's very sobering and very sickening sometimes when you think about how horrendous the crimes that humans have committed against other humans. I mean, but remember, judgment is is at the hands of God, and God is like little children that are going to judge these monsters that, you know, we perceive as monsters. But God says, no, I mean, look, I am able to save to the uttermost. I wish none to perish, but all to come to repentance. These, these are terms, passages taken from Scripture, that God does not delight in the destruction of the wicked. But his will is going to be forced upon the earth, and the unrighteous people know that. They know that the last few sands are running out of the hourglass. They know that humanity is going to start seeing a glimmer of hope at the end of the tunnel, that just like a dimmer switch, God's going to force it a little brighter, a little brighter. This is the Holy Spirit of truth that's coming upon humanity. Like leaven in the dough is going to wash all through it, even though it may not reach all parts of the dough, it'll find a way to permeate the dough. And that's what's coming to this earth. And I, I'm starting to feel it. I mean, I know with all that's going on in the world and all that I want to self-flagellate and, and metaphorically slash my wrists and, and seek forms of escapism and through vices of one sort or another, okay, to run, not walk away from this scene, man, because God knows I'm beside myself with what's going on in world events. I mean, think about it. At this point in human history, put yourself in God Almighty's shoes, and you've had to witness this crap unfold 
for thousands of years, all your beloved children, okay, that you've given everything to, even your own son, your own begotten son that didn't have a natural dad, you've given all this to them, and they've pissed it away, they've squandered it, they're out there murdering each other, starting these wars for profit, crime, committing hor horrendous crimes in order to survive, to get those three hots in a cot. The debt. Do we know what this does? People losing their will to live, turning to heroin, fentanyl, all this crap that's killing them. We had an epidemic here in Chico. I mean, these seem like pretty nice people. That's, that's the irony. Is they're not stupid people. I mean, you tell somebody, you know, you ask your kids, you say, hey, um, you know, that person that you know, they're not on heroin or I mean, oh, it's like, oh, my God, you know, it's like, oh, what did you, how dare you? You know, it's like, well, wait a minute. Somebody that's doing heroin, you're not, you're not you're saying they're stupid. You're not suggesting that. You're not insinuating that they're stupid. You're not inferring that they're stupid or that they're bad. That's not, it's, that's not what it's about. But it's just a serious disease that kills people. So you, you can't hang with it. You can't, you can't, you, you know, how are you going to be around to fight the good fight? So no matter how righteous you are, you have a duty to not lose your will to live. So you need encouragement. You need to be comforted. You need, you need friends that are real friends that, that will point you in the right direction. I can't save your life or anybody else's. I can't save my own life. All I can do is point you to the one that can. Like they say, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. It's like that. But God owns us and he loves us. There's just certain things that, that are logical and reasonable that, that have a rhythm and a rhyme, okay, to assume that it's safe, that it's okay to believe that you were created. I mean, it's that simple to believe in God and have that little, little bit of faith, that tiny bit of faith that you need to give you the strength you need to overcome and to be 100% pure in heart. Okay, and to continue walking and fighting this good fight. And anytime you fall and you're not pure in heart, the sooner you admit it and you confess it and you feel compunction and shame about it and you turn to God for forgiveness, he'll do it. And you'll get stronger and stronger and stronger and you'll fall less and less and less in terms of believing the way God wants you to believe. All the stupid little besetting sins of men will be forgiven them. It's like chaff that's going to be burned out. It's like the dross being burned out of the silver. It's all going to go. All that stuff doesn't matter. And believe me, I got plenty of that kind of sin. God knows it. I mean, it doesn't help to not confess it. I mean, you've got to at least confess it and say, this is not ideal. This is, you know, looking at porn is adulterous. I mean, even though you could, you know, rationalize it like so many do. I mean, oh my, this is God's creation. I mean, it, how bad can that be? I mean, God himself said, who told you you were naked, so what's wrong with... Look at images of naked people. I mean, you know, right? So, you know, there are certain sins that are practically ubiquitous. We're all at least curious about this. And so, but look, there's just a host. I mean, you could go down the line. We've got eating disorders. Uh, we've got, of course, the drugs. I've just been talking about that. Then you've got the alcohol. I mean, alcohol is, though, a type of drug. You've got tobacco. Uh, you know, some say, well, that's not so bad. Last week I said that, you know, the what was it, the oldest 10 people in the world at one point, I forgot to mention, they were all smokers, okay? I think it was in 2009. So it's just a little factoid that's interesting. It's about self-control because, you know, you're not warned about donuts, right? They don't say, oh, my gosh, uh, you know, we're going to put a huge tax on donuts because of the ill health effects. But if you have a diet of donuts, what, what do you think is going to happen to you? Okay, or soda pop. Let's say you do a fast and all you drink is ginger ale made with uh, high fructose corn syrup. What do you think is going to happen to your health? So there is, a, you know, if you want to say, you know, we're going to start taxing unhealthy substances. Okay, why don't we start there? If you overdo anything, it can be very, very damaging to your health. Okay, but we, oh, well, that's an extreme circumstance. I mean, look at all the smokers. Well, yeah, I mean, but they need to exercise self-control. I don't want to get sick. I'm a smoker, but I fully intend on living to be 120 years old. Mind over matter. I'm psyched out, and I suggest everybody be psyched out. Why 120? 
because it's written in Genesis chapter 6. That's it. 120 years. So God extended our years. I mean, he first they were dropped and then, okay, we got 120 years. Basically, that's it. That's why so many people can live very close to it. We just had a guy die at 112, right? The black veteran guy, very nice guy. I mean, 112, he says it's from uh, smoking cigars and drinking a lot of whiskey, right? So, I mean, you know, look, okay, a lot of it is just what you're psyched out for. But I plan on that. I wouldn't mind. Uh, but I hope that uh, things change. And I think that we're at that point in history where things are going to change profoundly and dramatically. We're going to see a sea change to beat the band, one that's unprecedented.